My weird school. Fast facts. Pizza, peanut butter, and pickles. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pilot. Chapter Eight. More weird food facts. In France, from 1748 to 1777, it was illegal to grow potatoes. The first supermarket was a Piggly Wiggly, opened by Clarence Saunders in 1916 in Memphis, Tennessee. Why did he call it Piggly Wiggly? The story is told that somebody asked Saunders why he chose such a weird name, and he replied. So people will ask that very question. Masticate means to chew. Horace Fletcher, eighteen forty nine to nineteen nineteen, was a health food expert who was known as the Great Masticator. He claimed that people should chew their food a hundred times a minute before swallowing it. I wouldn't want to eat dinner with that guy. Which U.S. city eats the most hot dogs? Los Angeles. Over ninety-five million hot dogs were eaten there in two thousand and twelve. PB and J. Many people think George Washington Carver invented peanut butter. Actually, the Aztecs were mashing peanuts into a paste thousands of years ago. At least four people get credit for inventing modern peanut butter and the machines that make it. Marcellus Gilmore Edison of Canada patented a kind of peanut paste in 1884. In 1895, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg of Kellogg's Cereal sold peanut butter as a healthy food for people who didn't have teeth. In 1903, Dr. Ambrose Straub of St. Louis. Patented a machine that made peanut butter, and in 1922, a chemist named Joseph Rosefield invented the process for making smooth peanut butter. He sold his invention to the company that created Peter Pan peanut butter, and later he returned to the peanut butter biz by introducing Skippy. Jelly is another story. Before there were refrigerators, around 1913, you couldn't get fruits that were out of season. So people started canning jams, jellies, and preserves so there would be fruit all year round. I know what you're thinking. Who was the genius who came up with the greatest invention in the history of the world? The peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Well, nobody knows for sure who was the first person to spread peanut butter and jelly on bread. We do know the first person to write about it. It was Julia Davis Chandler, who put a recipe for my favorite food in the 1901 Boston Cooking School magazine. So she gets credit. I'm going to go with Bob, a PB, and a J. Did you know that January is National Oatmeal Month, and February is Return Shopping Carts to the Supermarket Month? It's true. We don't make this stuff up. Look it up in July. That's National Pickle Month. In 1915, you could buy lunch for 15 cents. 15 cents. Of course, everything was cheaper a century ago. You could buy a loaf of bread for seven cents, a quart of milk for nine cents, or a dozen eggs for thirty-four cents. In Scotland, they call toffee tablet. It's so hard that you can't break it with your teeth, so they sell it with a little hammer. If you like licorice, buy black Twizzlers. Red Twizzlers don't have any licorice in them. They're made out of corn syrup, wheat flour, and artificial flavoring. You've heard of state flags, state birds, and state flowers. Well, Massachusetts and Pennsylvania named the chocolate chip cookie as their state cookie. Super Sunday. 
The Super Bowl is famous for two things: football and eating. Domino's sells about 12 million slices of pizza on Super Bowl Sunday. Americans will eat 139 million pounds of avocados, mostly in the form of guacamole. And if you're going to eat guacamole, you're going to need tortilla chips, 8.2 million pounds of it. According to the National Chicken Council, yes, that's a thing. 1.35 billion chicken wings are eaten on Super Bowl Sunday. That's a lot of wings. I wonder what they do with the rest of the chicken. It seems like such a waste to just eat the wings. When admired old Richard Byrd explored Antarctica in 1928, he brought along two and a half tons of NECA wafers. Museums are boring. Who wants to look at a bunch of paintings in a wall? But there's one museum I like to visit. It's the Candy Wrapper Museum. Yes, it's a museum filled with candy wrappers, so it has the perfect name. And the best part is, it's online, so you can visit it no matter where you live. The rock group Van Halen is famous for songs like "Jump" and "Panama." Van Halen was also famous for insisting their dressing room have a bowl of M and M's in it, and that all the brown M and M's had to be removed. The good old days. Many of us have it easy these days. We go to the supermarket and buy a week's worth of food. But back in colonial times, there were no supermarkets. There were no convenience foods or fast food restaurants. People ate what they could grow, raise, fish, or hunt. So they ate stuff like beaver tail, squirrel, eel, turtle soup, and bread made from acorns. One popular dish was clabber, which was raw milk that was left to go sour so it could thicken before being eaten. Gross! They even ate moose nose. That's right. Nothing got wasted. The nose of the moose was boiled and cut into thin slices, or mashed into a paste. They didn't have refrigerators in those days either. They preserved the food by salting, smoking, pickling, and making jam or marmalade. Food was often scarce during the Civil War, especially in the South. Soldiers survived on a lot of canned beans and salt pork. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, lots of people lost their jobs and couldn't afford food. They were lucky if there was a soup kitchen where they could get a free meal. There are many poor people who are hungry today too, all over the world. So we shouldn't take for granted the food we can get so easily. In Finland, people eat tar. They have tar-flavored ice cream and a tar-flavored licorice candy called tarvelajna. Do you know who invented energy bars, portable yogurt, instant coffee, and all the other grab-and-go snacks we eat? The U.S. military. It has been said that an army travels on its stomach. And soldiers in the field can't stop off at the nearest restaurant when their stomachs start to growl, so the military created portable packaged foods that soldiers could eat on the go. It turned out that other people liked them too: working parents, hikers, dieters, office workers, and kids who needed a quick snack. Weird food world records. Remember the time, Mr. Tony. Who is full of baloney? Helped us make the biggest pizza in the world. He used a flamethrower to heat it up. Well, here are some other weird food records. In 2018, Joey Chestnut ate 74 hot dogs in 10 minutes. It was at Nathan's famous Fourth of July hot dog eating contest in Coney Island. In 2017. Ashrita Furman from New York balanced 123 scoops of ice cream on one cone. He also holds the record for the most Guinness World Records titles. In 2011, 
Ross McCurdy from Kingston, Washington, cracked 32 eggs with one hand in one minute. In 1999, Gary Bashaw Jr. from Los Angeles swallowed a bunch of milkshake ingredients. Then he shot 1.82 ounces of milkshake out of his nose. That gave him the Guinness World Record for most milkshake dispensed through the nose. In 2012, 3,463 people at the University of Illinois set the record for most people husking corn at one time. In 2000, Rob Williams made a bologna sandwich in less than two minutes. That may not seem very impressive, except for the fact that he only used his feet. When it comes to weird food records, nobody is weirder than the British. Here are a few records set by British people. Freddie Yoner designed a toaster that can launch a piece of bread more than eight feet in the air. It's called the Moster. In 2012, 890 people in Sheffield flipped pancakes all at the same time. Forty of them dropped their pancake and were disqualified. In 2005, Colin Sherlow ate 233 oysters in three minutes. In 2017, Lewis Bacon set a record for running a half marathon. He was dressed as a hot dog, and his name is Bacon. Well, it looks like we've run out of pages, Arlo. No, I have one last fast fact. At the modern toilet restaurant in Taipei, each customer sits on a toilet and eats their meal at a sink or bathtub with a glass top. Not only that, but the food is served in a bowl shaped like a toilet. So, you can sit on the toilet and eat out of a toilet at the same time. Arlo. The ending. Congrats, weirdos! Now you know everything there is to know about food. They do not, Arlo. Well, that's true. I barely said anything about how food turns into pee and poop after you eat it. Would you like to hear more about that? No, but there's lots more cool stuff to know about food. You can learn just by reading the labels on the foods you eat. Reading, learning, ugh, disgusting. Oh, Arlo, you know that learning new stuff is cool. Isn't it fun to impress grown-ups with how smart you are? They think kids are a bunch of dumbheads who don't know anything, but we'll show them. That's right. You think the stuff in this book was weird? We didn't have room to talk about all the weird stuff people eat that isn't even food. Go ahead, look this stuff up. Yes, maybe you'll be able to convince your parents that magician Todd Robbins has eaten over five thousand light bulbs. Maybe you'll be able to convince your teacher that Leon Samson, the Australian circus strongman, won a bet by eating a whole car. It took four years. Maybe you'll be able to convince your librarian that Michelle Lotito from France ate eighteen bicycles, fifteen shopping carts, seven televisions, two beds, a pair of skis, and an airplane. But it won't be easy.